In this video, I'm going to go through how to find the uh, probability that x is greater than 1 given that y equals 1. Okay, and so um, we have this funky support where x depends on y. All right, first thing uh, we're, we're going to want to do is we're going to find the marginal distribution of um, x given y. Okay. So the first thing, let's find the marginal distribution of x given y, which is the joint distribution, by definition, is the joint distribution divided by the marginal distribution of y. Okay, so whatever is given, that becomes the denominator. All right, the marginal distribution of y. So first thing I'm gonna wanna do is find the marginal distribution of y. Okay, so this marginal distribution of y, in order to get the marginal distribution of y, you need to integrate out x. So you integrate the joint distribution, you integrate over x. By definition, th that's what the marginal distribution is. So these two things, these two formulas I've written here are just definitions. Okay, all right, so now let's talk about integrating over x. Now we have this support where x depends on y, right? So what are the value, what values can um, x take? x can take values between y and two and the value of f will be non-zero. Otherwise it's zero, right? So from negative infinity until we get to y, okay? And then y until we get to two, Okay, and then two onwards to infinity. All right, so I've broken this um, integral into three pieces using the addition rule for integration. All right, we can break it up as long as our um, limits are matching. All right, so we're going from a infinity to y, picking it up at y, y to two, and picking it up from two, two to infinity. All right, so from negative infinity till we get to y, this function just takes zero values. So if you integrate zero, you get zero, okay? From y to two, this function takes three-fourths x minus y. So let's go ahead and write that down. x minus y dx, okay? And then from two onwards, it also just takes on zero values, okay? So two onwards takes on zero, so this is just zero. If you integrate zero, you get zero, all right? Let's go ahead and pull out that three-fourths. So I'll have, I'm integrating from y to two, x minus y dx, okay? So let's go ahead and do this integral. I'm integrating with regards to x, so that means this will become one-half x squared. This is just a constant, so it will become y times x evaluated from y to two, okay? So let's go ahead and continue this. I just integrated with regards to x, so I'm gonna be plugging these guys for x, okay? So this will become one half times, let's see, two squared minus two y minus, all right, I'm gonna plug this guy now in for x, one half, y squared minus y squared, right? If I plug in y for x, I get this as part of y squared. Okay, all right, so let's be careful here. This is four, four divided by two is two. Okay, this is one half y squared minus one y squared, so that's three halves y squared. Actually, that would be, hmm, Actually, let's be careful. This is two over two, right? So that's one minus two, which is negative one. Okay, so minus negative one half, right? One half minus one is negative one half, yeah, yeah. Okay, keep it going. So this now becomes plus one half y squared. All right, that's as simple as it gets. Okay, so what's my 
marginal distribution. That's my marginal distribution. Don't forget when you're writing out a marginal distribution, you should always include your support. Okay, so we've integrated over x. So now what is y? y now, since we've integrated out x, y now is between 0 and 2. Okay, so that's your support. So y now is between 0 and 2. 0 otherwise. Okay, so this is the marginal distribution for y. All right, great. So that's the marginal distribution of y. Let's go ahead and plug that in here. Okay, now we know the joint distribution of y. Or sorry, we know the joint distribution for x and y. So let's go ahead and plug that in. 3 fourths x minus y. Okay, the marginal distribution, 3 fourths 2 minus 2y. So let me go and write this down. 3 fourths 2 minus 2y minus or plus 1 half y squared. Plus 1 half y squared. All right, great. This 1 half, or sorry, this 3 fourths cancels with that 3 fourths. All right, so my conditional distribution for x given y, all right, is x minus y in the numerator and 2 minus 2y plus 1 half y squared in the denominator. All right, don't forget your support. Okay, even though, uh, so in this, um, you know, margin in a margin or sorry in a conditional distribution, y is not random, right? But even though it's not random, it still needs to meet the original conditions of the joint distribution. Okay, so y can't be equal to three. If it if y is equal to three, then the conditional distribution you should still get zero because the numerator would then be zero. Okay, so basically the support is still the same thing up here um, for your conditional distribution. So between 0 and 2, okay? So let's go ahead and write that here. All right, so y is greater than 0 is less than x, less than 2, all right? All right, so great, so now I have the marginal distribution. Now the question was to find the probability x is greater than 1 given y equals 1, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I'm going to find given y equals 1. Okay, so that's first thing. Let's plug in our um, y equals 1 here. Okay, so y equals 1. That's, that's okay. So this is 1, sorry, x minus 1 divided by 2 minus 2, 1 plus 1 half times 1 squared. Okay, and so now your support changes a little bit because now y, remember y is fixed. So the support is 1x2. And clearly 1 is more than 0, so you really did not need to write that, right? You don't, don't need to write this piece right here. Okay, that's the support, and then it's 0 otherwise. Okay. All right. Um, let's go ahead and simplify what we see here on the bottom. So that on the bottom we see 2 minus 2 plus 1 half. The 2's cancel and you end up with just 1 half. Okay. So I can erase this. This is just 1 half on the bottom. Now when you have a fraction over a fraction, you take, the, take this and flip it around. So let's go ahead and simplify that. That would be 2 times x minus 1. Okay. All right, great. So now I have my conditional distribution given y equals 1. So now they're asking me to find the probability that x is greater than 1 given y equals 1. So to find this probability that x is greater than 1 given y equals 1, I'll want to go from um, x equals x is 1 down here, right? the lowest x can be is 1, okay? And then x is greater than 1, so that means it goes to infinity, all right? So x is greater than 1, so 1 onward to infinity, okay? Of this conditional distribution given y equals 1. And I'll have to integrate out over x, right? 
because I'm trying to find a probability for x. Okay, so uh, from 1 to 2, this conditional di distribution takes non-zero values. Okay, and then from 2 onward to infinity, it's going to take a zero value. Okay, so if I integrate this, this is going to be zero on this side because it's the function, the conditional distribution is zero otherwise, right? Okay, so when it's when um, x is between one and two, then we take this value here, dx. Okay, and then otherwise it's zero. So that's you're integrating zero basically. So that's zero. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do this integral. Pull out the two. All right, so then this would be one half x squared minus x. Evaluate it from one to two. All right, so this then would be two. This would be, do your upper bounds first, your upper limits. Okay, then do the lower. Okay, simplify. Two squared is four, four divided by two is two. One half minus one is negative one half. All right, so the twos cancel. And we're left with, this is positive, one half. Okay, so we're left with one. All right, so the probability that x is greater than one, given y equals one, is one, right? And the reason why this happened is because x must be greater than y. So y, if, if, x, if y equals one, then x must be greater than one.